Um, I'm here today with Peter Taff, who's the General Secretary of the Socialist Party. Welcome to everyone who's watching. My name's Claire. Peter is the author of a number of books, including The Rise of Militants, which some of you may have read. And he's here to talk about the general election, which is upcoming, and what that means for uh, socialists and for people who are involved in the workers' movement, but also to talk about a book which is out this week, which he's recently written. It's called From Militant to the Socialist Party, and it follows on from where the rise of militant left off. So welcome, Peter. Um, Peter, can you tell us a little bit about why this book is relevant now? Uh, what is it that makes it such an important read for workers and young people who are involved in the struggle for socialism in 2017? Well, in a way, it's accidental that it's coming out now in the middle of a general election. But it's very appropriate because it's dealing with the period from 1995 to 2007, which was a period, if you like, which had both Labour and Tory governments, both of which were incapable of solving the problems of working people. And it charts the history of militants which became today the Socialist Party. And it's got a tremendous, we've got a tremendous history. We, in over 50 years, we've been involved in all the major struggles and battles of the working people, of the young people, and so on. For instance, in Liverpool, between 1983 and 1987, in the poll tax, and on both occasions, we beat Margaret Thatcher. Now, it's relevant also because it deals with the period of the last Labour government, which was an abject failure, which was a period under Blair of privatisation, and that's why it's relevant to this general election, because it's a breath of fresh air that Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour manifesto has gone back to the basic ideas of socialism, of nationalisation, and what is that except the recognition that the old idea of privatisation, of selling off our industries and our wealth to the highest rich bidder, that's coming to an end if Jeremy Corbyn is elected in the, in the general election on June the 8th. So it's very relevant. It's relevant to the past, but it's also relevant to the future as well. OK, well, obviously, over the last week, we've had the launch of Labour's manifesto, and Jeremy Corbyn is now the leader of that party. Wouldn't you say that perhaps now the Labour Party is a kind of different kettle of fish to the one described in your book? Well, it's different. It's not yet a completely different kettle of fish because there's two parties in one. There's still the old right wing that's trying to sabotage and undermine, undermine Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn and those like us who support him stand for a new chapter in the history of the British working class, which is one of struggle of socialism and it's tremendous that the demands that have been put forward on the question of nationalisation of rail, nationalisation of the post office, of water and so on, that's a rejection of the past discredited period of Blairism and opens up a new chapter in the history of the working class in Britain. Even if Corbyn is not successful on June the 8th, and I think it's possible, if this is taken with enthusiasm to the mass of the working class and the youth, it has established again the principle of socialism, of nationalisation, and that will be the theme that the Labour movement will take, take up in the aftermath of the general election. So what do you think is going to be the most important campaigning that we'll need to do as the Socialist Party in the period that follows on from the election? Well, the general election campaign itself is crucial. We've got to move heaven and earth to try and get a Corbyn victory. The programme is very good. It doesn't go as far as we would like. It's partial nationalisation. But in a way, that doesn't matter to the broad mass of working people. They see nationalisation. They see this as a new opening up. They see the cancellation of tuition fees. They see the pledges on poverty and the pledges in relation to privatisation and so on. That represents a new beginning. Let's hope that we're successful on June the 8th, that opens up a new period, but we, we're realistic here. We cannot rule out that the right will try and continue to sabotage and undermine. They may even stay in the Labour Party afterwards. They've accommodated themselves to this situation because of the tremendous support that Jeremy Corbyn and his supporters have got at this moment in time. But don't rule out 
that they will try and sabotage as they've sabotaged in the past. They are the real capitalist infiltrators into the Labour Party. A new chapter will open up. I hope, I ho I hope it will be a broad democratic party. I hope they will welcome people like us in the old idea of the Labour movement, of a federation of different socialist organisations. And in that way, we'll, we'll offer hope to the new generation of young people and to the working class. So why do you think it is that Jeremy Corbyn's getting this fantastic support at the moment? Well, because of the conditions that exist in Britain. It's not rocket science. You only have to open any newspaper to see that wages are stagnant. In fact, they are more stagnant since 2007 than at any other previous period for 200 years. That's an incredible situation where nurses cannot live on their wages, many going to food banks. In my own hometown of Birkenhead, there's something like 10,000 people using food banks regularly. So we have this ocean of poverty and people feel that nobody has represented them up to now. Now they feel a glimmer of hope. That's got to be turned into certainty that this offers a new road. It means we have no alternative but to confront big business. And it's very good what Corbyn and the manifesto says in relation to taxing the rich. We're in favour of a tax on the rich. But it's not just a wealth tax. It's not just a question of taking from the rich. It's a question of taking over what the labour movement in the past called the means of production. That's the big factories. Not every fish and chip shop, not small corner shops, but the big monopolies that control 80, 85 percent of the wealth. If they were taken over, and the press is now screaming, you're not costing your programme. We refuse to get involved arguing over pennies and shillings about how much compensation will be paid. OK, we're in favour. If rail, for instance, is nationalised, what right of the rich shareholders to be compensated from the misery that they are inflicting daily on ordinary people? Give them compensation, but on the basis of proven need, maybe on the disability allowance, which many uh, workers are protesting about at the present time. On the basis of proven need, the big boys should get nothing. The banks should get nothing. They have ruined the industry of Britain. We've paid out a fortune since 2007. If you don't believe me, look at Mervyn King's recent book on alchemy and the financial system. He admits there the, the, the rackets, the, the, the fiddling, the rigging, as Jeremy Corbyn has put it, of capitalism. So we say this can all be afforded, but not within the confines of capitalism. It has to be by putting forward a socialist programme. Then we can open up a new road. What does that mean? It means a socialist plan of production. The question of housing for young people above all. The cancellation of tuition fees and so on. These are basic points, but they can be introduced if there's a will and if there's a programme to change society. Now, it won't change overnight on June the 9th, but it opens up a new beginning. Once you raise the question of nationalisation, that means the appetite will grow with eating. Once people see the effects of an industry being nationalised, like for instance in 1945, when the miners marched to work with red flags, when their industry was taken over, the same with the railways and so on. Once that develops, then the idea of other industries being taken over. That's why there's such a frenzy in the capitalist media, not just in the newspapers, but in the television and so on. Corbyn is reflecting this mood. The old discredited Blairites are reflecting the mood of yesteryear, of yesterday. They want to remain within the confines of capitalism. We want to break with capitalism. We want to open up a new revolutionary road, if you like, in the sense of an organisation and a society that benefits working people and doesn't punish them as this society is doing at the present time. So, Peter, you just mentioned Tony Blair, and obviously Tony Blair has recently made an appearance in the news uh, as trying to return to politics. You're obviously a veteran of the fight against Blairism. How do you think that's likely to develop over the next period? Well, it's not an accident, is it, Claire, that Blairism in Britain that led the way, really, for the Social Democrats worldwide to move towards the right, to expunge socialism from the constitutions of different workers' parties and so on. And now, Blair is utterly discredited in Britain. 
for the Iraq war, but not just for the Iraq war. We have to remember, he admits in his biography, the, the closest he came to being toppled from power was over tuition fees mm. in the vote that took place in the House of Commons over the introduction of this measure. He's never been forgiven for that, nor of the Liberal Democrats. That represents the greatest betrayal of youth that we've seen probably since 1945 together with the wars that he conducted and so on. So that chapter is over. They can only have a very limited existence with inside the Labour Party. They probably, if they don't get the way, split from the Labour Party in the aftermath of the election, or we should kick them out. And in the course of that movement, the Labour Party, these two parties, would then develop into two parties in actual fact. One a pro-capitalist party outside the Labour Party, probably linking up with the Liberals or a section of the Liberals, even with a section of Tories to form a so-called new centre party, and then we can get on with the real business of discussing amongst ourselves the best way to move towards socialism. Well, thank you very much, Peter. It's been extremely exciting to talk about the book with you. And I hope that everyone viewing this video has enjoyed it. Hopefully it will have whet your appetite to buy a copy of the book. And if you would like to purchase a copy of Peter's book, it's available on socialistbooks.co.uk. And of course, if you'd like the opportunity to meet Peter in person, uh, perhaps to discuss with him, to ask some questions, then the London Socialist Party will be hosting an official book launch and of course there'll be an opportunity to get Peter to sign your book as well so it would be great if you would like to come along. That's on Thursday the 25th of May and it's going to be in Bloomsbury Baptist Church at half past seven in the evening and we really hope to see you there.